we are back again for the last video in the series on, on controlling our gears bot. And this is actually kind of the culmination of all this other stuff that you've seen. We're going to do one really complex command, which you'll see is actually not complex at all, but the robot is going to do very complex things. Everybody in your team is going to be really impressed of how, about how good of a programmer you are because you've cranked out this stuff so fast and it just works. So what we're going to do now is make a command, a command group um, that does the whole soda delivery operation. That whole the whole deal that you saw um, in the very first video, where you, where you saw what the um, uh, robot does during autonomous, during the autonomous, you know, or that you saw during our autonomous period. Um, and so so here we go. The first thing we're going to do is uh, well, actually, we're just going to have a whole bunch of sequential commands that that happen in sequence. So the first one is we're going to do the prepare to grab command. Now, if you remember, the prepare to, to, pre, the prepare to grab command is itself a command group, which means that it's made up of a whole bunch of separate commands. And so you can nest these. You can have one inside of another. And so this uh, soda delivery thing first prepares to grab, and then it grabs. So we call the grab command, uh, which is also a command group. Then we do drive to distance. So we're going to drive... Um, after grabbing the soda can, we're going to drive so we're right near the box. Okay, that's the 0.11 value. That was the that was the uh, uh, command that we created in the previous video. Okay, then we're going to place the soda can um, onto the box, which again is a command group. So that's a bunch of commands all nested together. Okay, and then um, now we're just going to back away from the box, so we're going to drive to a distance of two tenths, and and you'll notice. It doesn't really matter. In this case, we're driving backwards. In the other case, we're driving forwards. The PID controller will just give negative values to the motors um, when, when the error is negative, and it will just back up. So you don't have anything special here for driving forwards or driving backwards. It just drives to the position. And then the last thing we do is just stow the, we stow the, um, um, the what are we stowing? Oh, this stows everything. It stows everything. This stows everything. Claw. List the elevator and list the list back in. So back where we started. So again, another command group that's uh, that we're putting into this command group. So it's doing all of these operations with how many? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code. Yep. Pretty cool, if I do say so. Yeah. Uh, and I do. So so there you go. Now, uh, what's really nice is, you know, you want to have like a really good autonomous program. And say your autonomous program is to do this. I mean, say this is the autonomous trick. Well, let's set it up the autonomous then. So let's make this be the autonomous program. So you come in here to the line we commented out at the beginning, and we set our autonomous command to be a soda delivery command. So... Uh, and we set it import it. Yes. So we have the import. So you'll notice this is it. So that we define this variable called autonomous command, which is itself a command, and we uh, uh, make that be a new um, uh, instance of soda delivery. And then, when in the autonomous init method is run, now don't forget this: the autonomous init method is run the first time autonomous is done. So, so the so the robot flips to autonomous mode. Okay, the field flips to autonomous mode. It tells the robot it's now autonomous, and it calls the autonomous init method once. And then, and then it will call the autonomous periodic method uh, over and over again after that. So um, what we're doing in the autonomous init method is telling it to start the autonomous command, which was our soda delivery instance. And so that schedules it to start running, and it goes. So that starts doing all the things which are in that command group um, that uh, delivers a soda. So that's not bad. So we now have this like pretty complex autonomous command, autonomous program, um, just by using that command. And if you, it cancels it automatically because otherwise the command would continue into teleop. But if you wanted the autonomous to continue, like if it, you had a 20 second autonomous and you weren't afraid of being interrupted, you could delete this and it would just continue doing what, what it was doing and finish the autonomous up. So this just guarantees that it, in the teleop init method, which is the thing that's called the first time you enter a teleop, it just makes sure that the autonomous command is canceled. Okay, so now here's the deal. Suppose you got a game where um, you've got some um, uh, command group that does 
something like score a tube or like maybe it shoots balls into uh, some kind of uh, some kind of hoop goal thing or something like that. And you and you got it doing that for autonomous. You've written a, a command group that does that for autonomous. Wouldn't it be cool if while the drivers were driving around with the robot, um, they got lined up kind of in the same position that this uh, uh, scoring in the hoop uh, command would be um, that you use during autonomous, but they just want to use it during teleop. So as it turns out, here we go. All you have to do is bind a button to that command and it will just run it also in teleop. So when you press button one here, then uh, what it's going to do in this case is it's just going to do soda delivery. So, so that does our whole autonomous program uh, also in teleop anytime that that button is pressed, which is like really, really cool because very often you want to do the autonomous stuff also in teleop, especially like say in years like uh, 2012. So that could come in like really handy for you. Um, what else do we have to say? Um, well, the, you just saw it. It took us how long to write a full program, and that's topping and talking to you. You know, we were just, we were just, you know, out having dinner, and we were trying to figure out how many lines we actually had to type to make this work. You know, the program is kind of big. It's got a lot of uh, classes in it and stuff, and, and you look at it, and you go, man, that's like a lot of stuff that we had to write. But we were thinking that we probably didn't have to type in more than 100 lines. And we got this like very very full featured robot with a pretty uh, interesting autonomous command, autonomous program, and some really cool tricks that it does in teleop, and maybe with a hundred lines of code. And we did it in how long? Like an hour? I don't know how long we did it for these videos, but I know that we were doing it in uh, the kickoff, and we did it for in the workshops, and we did it in fifty minutes. Fifty minutes with a lot of explanations. Yes. So so not bad. You guys have six weeks. Well, six weeks from yesterday. So, um, so you should be able to do this no problem also. So the place to go for more information about writing these kinds of programs is the um, uh, WPI Lab cookbook, which you can get from uh, firstforge.wpi.edu. You go to the WPI Lab project, then go to the document section, and then you'll find the cookbook. And the cookbook has a whole bunch of examples of how to do this kind of stuff and a lot more explanation. And uh, also, the other place you can go is if you start up NetBeans and you um, um, open the uh, oh here we go if you start if you if you do some samples the samples section under FRC Java you'll see a whole bunch of sample programs and one of them is the GearsBot program the one we just that's wrote. the one we just wrote so you can go back and look at it and um, and kind of see it's already exists in memory but um, you can go back uh, and look at it and oh don't do that why not okay <laughs> no. Okay, great. But and then and then there it is. And this one has we took a little bit more time with and commented. Oh yeah, so when you look at these so things, it cool. actually explains what it's doing. And if you just right click on the project and generate the Java doc. Oh good point. It will it will it will generate Java docs, which is very, very cool. Um, it does this by extracting the comments out. Um, and uh, let's see somewhere Somewhere on this machine, it opened a browser, um, and uh, uh, and it has all the Java docs in it. But we don't know where that is. So, but that's okay. Just do this on your machine, and you'll see it. It will pop up your browser with um, with documentation for this program. Okay, so I guess that's it for now. And we'll we'll try and do some more stuff a little bit later um, that shows the smart dashboard and shows maybe some camera stuff and maybe uh, some of these other advanced command things. But I think you get the idea. Uh, this is probably something worth looking at. So uh, good luck this season, and uh, we'll see you in our next uh, video. Okay, hit it.